Using whole life insurance for a long-term planning, whether that is retirement, taking advantage of opportunities that come up in the future or we know are going to come up in the future, how does it work? How can I use a policy and plan long-term? The short-term is great. When an opportunity comes up now, I want to be able to take advantage of that. But at the same time, how do I properly plan or what are the benefits of utilizing whole life insurance in the long-term play? especially if I'm diversified. Maybe I'm investing in real estate, maybe I'm investing in business, maybe I'm paying off debt over a long period of time, maybe I've got money in the market. How can a whole life insurance policy play into my portfolio in a positive manner? It's gotta work, I've gotta see the numbers and it's gotta be a fit. If it's not, hey, that's okay, but let's see the numbers and see if it actually works. Well, what are the core benefits first and foremost? We talk about this a lot. With a whole life insurance policy, if we design it properly for maximum cash value, it is a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money that will produce somewhere between, call it that three and a half and five and a half percent range. Historically, we've seen policies do a bit better than that, but that's considering policies that lived through dividend, <laughs> dividend rate periods that were double digits, not expecting that again, at least not anytime soon. One last thing to mention, and this kind of ties into the liquidity feature, is around policy loans, is in the sense that once a dollar passes through the cash value of a life insurance policy, regardless if I just let it sit and grow and earn, call it that three and a half to five and a half percent, or if I pull money out, I will continue to earn interest on the full cash value as if I never touched it in the first place. And by the way, that three and a half to five and a half percent range, it's gotta be with one of the top companies and it has to be designed properly. A lot of times we hear, and I've seen it, policies that produce between one and 2%. The design's the big culprit there. If it's not designed for maximum cash value, it's more so weighted towards the death benefit. That's where you can see a case like that occur. So let's go through these benefits here. A couple things that can pop up throughout your lifetime. Market fluctuation. Does this happen? <laughs> yes. Stock market, the economy as well, but we're going to focus on the stock market here. So what do I have with a whole life insurance policy, particularly around the safety? One, it is consistent. Regardless of what happens in the market, if I have my money with a whole life insurance policy with a company, my money is not invested in the stock market at all. I'm with that insurance company and really participating in where in their performance, where they're investing, <clears throat> excuse me, where they're investing. If it's a mutual insurance company, as a policyholder, you are a partial owner. With a mutual company, policyholders technically own the company. So it is consistent, meaning every single year, no matter what happens, I have the guaranteed rate and dividends as well. Dividends are not guaranteed, but have always been paid at least for the past 150 years with a lot of these top companies, I see it constantly go up. I remember when I was starting off in my career um, at the individual planning firm where I kind of worked my way into a, a designer there as far as working the illustration software, but was at an event and an individual was talking about you know equities, annuities, other products, but he had whole life, he had owned it. And this was 2011 or 2012, this meeting, and he said, you know, when 2008 occurred, I had my whole life insurance policy and it just earned 6%. Like my dividend was 8%, whatever it was, like it just kept going up. I didn't have to worry about it at all. I love it as a piece of the puzzle, a part of my portfolio because it's safe, guaranteed. Like it, it does what it does, makes it very easy, which leads into the next two points, peace of mind. If things are going crazy, I don't have to worry about my, my values tanking in a whole life insurance policy. And it's a hands-off approach. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners we talk to like this a lot because if your focus is on your business, right? If there's a, a market crash, an economic crash or recession where everyone's backing up and playing defense, as a business owner, you wanna be ready to push into it or really just be on your game. If you have to worry about other things like your money in the market and 
whatever else it might be, if there's a real estate crash, that is going to distract us. Even if it only is a little thing that we can solve quickly, it's a distraction and it takes our time away. If you've got something that's hands off, hey, it's like a bank account, but it actually earns interest. If anything happens to me, a death benefit's paid out, I'm good and I've got access to it as well. So a lot of people have been attracted to this piece. These two kind of go hand in hand, the peace in mind and hands off approach. If opportunities pop up, the liquidity is very nice. All right. <laughs> so an opportunity could be a real estate transaction. Whether there's a real estate crash or not, so many real estate investors utilize cash value life insurance, mainly because how loans work is very similar to how real estate works. If you've got a piece of property, that's appreciating this my house at 5% every single year, the appraisal value that is, if you loan against it, does that impact the appraisal value on that property at all? No, if it goes up, it goes up. Same thing happens with the cash value life insurance policy in respect to policy loans. You pay interest on the loan with a policy to the insurance company, with a lender, with a, a lender to the lender, the institution we're working with, but we still receive appreciation on everything. So with real estate, if an opportunity comes up, the liquidity, I can request a loan from my policy and I rec receive it typically in three to five business days, unless I made a deposit the day before, then I've got to typically wait 10 business days or so before I can request a policy loan. Some other opportunities, paying off debt, investing in a business, perhaps your own business, or the stock market. You know, when um, March of 2020 came with the COVID crisis and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on then, what happened to the stock market? Came down quickly. People had reached out that had large amounts of money in their policy, they said, hey, what is the maximum loan? Or I wanna take a huge loan out and take advantage of the market right now. Now it's good to go over the pros and cons there, what if it keeps going down? But at the same time, they viewed it, hey, here's an opportunity I have, let me borrow for my policy, it's extremely liquid so I could get it quickly and then take advantage of the opportunity as it's there. Some did quite well, especially with how fast the market rebounded. And then we've got retirement. Life insurance is pushed so heavily in this respect. Income in retirement. I can disperse income on a tax-free basis. I've got to do this. I always throw this word in there. Tax-free if we do so properly. That's the compliance side of me. Meaning life insurance policies can become taxable if we mess it up with a mech or a do some other things that can cause a taxable event, which we've got other video content on. But if we do everything properly, we can get money out tax-free. So in respect to income, we can take out a level income stream or it can be adjustable. Meaning I can solve, I can build a policy and solve to take out $100,000, $150,000 per year in income when I turn 65, 70, whenever it might be. I can also elect to take out different amounts each year, meaning I do not just have to flip on the income switch like I would with an annuity. I can say, hey, I want $100,000 this year. I only need 50,000 next year. I need 70 the following. Oh, need a little bit more. Let's pull out another 70. You can bounce it up and down. You've got complete control there. So one thing I always like to mention with whole life is it gives the consumer Control. So let's look at these different options. Safe, liquid, tax-free, specifically with the income. Let's look at the safety first. So here we've got a policy, 40-year-old male, funding it at 50 grand per year for seven years. What does it look like in an absolute worst case scenario based off the guarantees, based off of the company's present dividend rate, and then an indexed feature. So a lot of times we can, well, not a lot of times, depending on the company, we can add an indexed feature, which is still a pure whole life insurance product, not an indexed universal life, so we don't take on that risk, but a pure whole life insurance product with indexed potential, indexing potential. And we can go back and forth between that and the dividend. Point being here is 
If different options exist, I want to see them all, right? Because I'm nuts. So here's the guaranteed values. Worst case scenario, 50 per year for seven years. Breaking even between years four and five, just about year four. That is solid for a whole life insurance policy based on the guarantees, worst case scenario. Present dividend rate between years three and four, and then you've got the index feature still between years three and four. Now, the annual internal rate of return is really what we want to look at, meaning what's my net growth over time? Because have you ever heard that, hey, you've got a guarantee of 4% meaning I'm earning 4% on my money? No, not at all. A dividend of 5.65. Is that what you're earning on your money? No, not at all. When you see a guaranteed rate or a dividend rate, whatever that rate is, always remember this. That is a gross rate credited after the company's insurance expenses, mortality charges, basically the cost of the insurance policy. Why I mention that is on this example with the guarantees, We've got our annual internal rate of return, what you're earning each year. It is a tax-free yield if it's done properly. Tops out at what? About 3.35%. Annual internal rate of return represents what you are earning each year. For example, if you ever said, I earned 8% in the market last year, that's what you earned that year. However, over the past 10 years, you may have averaged 5% with all the ups and downs. So the annual isolates year to year, whereas the average, <coughs> excuse me, factors in all years. Averages out about 2.85%. We can scroll down further. Same thing with the dividend, a bit stronger. And then we've got the indexed assumption, which by the way, it could do much better than this, but I don't like illustrating strong rates. That's what happens so much in the insurance industry. So many people will always, agents will show the best possible scenario based off of market history, if you're using an index strategy, whatever it might be. But the thing is, when you look at actual life insurance policies that have lived the test of time, even when they're well designed, a lot of times they under deliver compared to what the illustration projected. So it's always good to set expectations properly. If you just show the best numbers and it doesn't deliver, are going to be upset with the company or me as your agent? Yeah, me as your agent. So the safety, there we go. Safe, there's the guarantees and can potentially do better. No risk and I've got the tax benefits as well. Next thing, liquidity. When an opportunity pops up, I have access to the money. Okay, that's good. 40 year old male, same funding. 50 for seven years, this is the same policy. This one's based off of the dividend, but here's what I wanna look at. Crossing over, breaking even between three and four. Loans, takes out a policy loan. He can take it anytime. A lot of times we'll illustrate taking it earlier, but takes out a $300,000 loan. We'll assume this is for a piece of property. That could be appreciating at 5%, or perhaps it's a rental property that produces a net of 10 to 12% return, whatever, whatever our thing is from an investment standpoint. So we take out that $300,000 loan. My question would be this, what is the impact of that policy loan? Because I take out $300,000, the cash value is the gauge that determines how much I can borrow. Call it your equity that you can borrow against. That's why you see your cash value reduce the year you take out a loan. Now, the company says, hey, I'm still going to pay you a dividend on any money in cash value and any funds outstanding in loans. Meaning, I'm not gonna recognize the fact that you pulled that 300,000 out. I'm gonna pay you the same dividend as if it were still there. All right, that sounds great. How are you gonna do that? Well, and why are you gonna do that? Well, <laughs> two reasons why. One, there is a loan interest expense, a cost to borrow. In this example, it's four and a half percent. And then when we take out a loan, if I'm still going to earn interest on my entire asset, what's going to exist? Collateral. They're going to collateralize the death benefit. You will see a reduction here of the loan balance. 
can take this, subtract $313,500. Okay, now as time passes, here's the fun part. That's when my loan's paid back. So when I pay that loan off, what's my cash value? 618, death benefits 1.479. When I never touched the policy, what's my cash value? 618, death benefits 1479. Identical, no lost opportunity cost, money kept on compounding, kept moving forward for me. Now it's always good to factor in the loan interest expense. So we paid the loan interest each year. He also repaid it at 50,000 per year. So it's good to tally up the payments or, hey, here's my net interest expense that went where? The insurance company. Good to be aware of that for full transparency. A lot of times we, we, we have studies that have additional columns where we're showing how much net out of pocket did I pay. So we touched on safety, liquidity, what's last? Income or the tax-free income piece, retirement. All right, here we go. So a little different sample here. 50-year-old male paying in 50,000 for 10 years. Here's my payments. Let's do it this way this time. There we go. Cash value between years four and five. Good. Paid in a total of $500,000. So I want to put more emphasis on this column this time, the cumulative outlay, meaning I paid in a total of 500 grand. When I start to pull out income, I want to pull that out, but also what happens after I pull out 500,000? How much total can I pull out? This is a combination of withdrawals and loans when we start to take out income. So at age 65, he begins to pull out $50,000 per year. This is a level income stream. By year 25 or age 74, he's pulled out 500,000. He paid in five, he pulled out five. If he dies then, he's got 586 in cash and his net death benefit would be 885,000. If he wants to keep on distributing income, well, we do just that up until age 85. So he's pulled out a total bucks, but really he paid in 500,000, took his principal back out and another 500 on top of it. That was his total income disbursement in this example. And we solved it to leave enough cash value in there. If we go down past 100, he's still got enough left. And if he wanted to pull income longer or fluctuating amounts, we would illustrate that as well. It's good always to look at that kind of stuff, but this is just one example. So. Long-term planning, covered a lot there. All of this we can do over the long haul. We can do it immediately too in the short term. It really depends how much, what, how much cash value that we've got in our policy. The more money you've got there, the more you have access to, to take advantage of the opportunities as they arrive. So know this was a lot of information. If you have any questions, reach out anytime. We'd love to work with you. And as always, I hope this helps. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.